I'm Joe Styron from the Cleveland Clinic, and today we're going to discuss the dorsal approach to an open reduction with internal fixation of the scaphoid. So we'll start with identifying Lister's tubercle and then making a small longitudinal incision, ulnar and just distal to Lister's because our interval will be between the third and the fourth extensor compartments to get down to the dorsal wrist capsule. See the fourth compartment here, the third compartment over here. And once we retract those tendons, then we'll get down to the wrist joint capsule itself. So this is looking uh, in the wrist. You can see the third compartment, EPL, going off here, and the fourth compartment right here. And so this is the interval where we're going to approach the wrist joint itself and here's the retinaculum released. So now that we have the tendons exposed, we can protect them as we go down to open our wrist joint. Once we uh, have our interval, we'll make a small arthrotomy, lifting up on the joint capsule so as not to injure our SL ligament because that's what we're going to look for as we enter the wrist here. As we're looking into the joint capsule here, we'll start to see the proximal pole of the scaphoid. Our starting point for the pin is going to be right off of the scapholunate ligament, and we're going to want to aim for the base of the thumb. We'll drop our hand, and then we'll check our pin position under fluoroscopy. So on the AP view, what I'm looking for is that it's right down the center. You see it coming right through the tip of the proximal pole and ending right at the crest of the distal pole. So it'll be right down the center of the uh, axis there. And then on the lateral view, since I'm trying to get in two screws into the scaphoid, I have one that's going to go along the dorsal ridge and leaves me space to have another parallel to that right along the volar uh, cortex of the scaphoid as well. Now that I like the guide position based on our uh, fluoroscopy, I know that I want this to be the dorsal guide wire, but I want to place a second guide wire parallel to this one, slightly more volar, so that I can have two screws across the fracture site. I can use this parallel drilling and guide pin guide to accomplish that. There are different holes on the guide because the nano and the micro will use the smaller. The nano guide pin is 0.7 millimeters and the micro is 0.9 millimeters. So both can be accommodated by the smaller holes, whereas both the mini and the standard screws utilize a 1.1 millimeter guide pin and will use the larger holes within this parallel guide. The distance between the pins is adjustable between 2.5 millimeters and 20 millimeters. Since we are placing a micro screw, we're going to have the tail of the screw is three millimeters. So we want the pins to be greater than three millimeters apart. So we're going to place this just shy of the five and tighten it down. Then we will flex the wrist to get our volar pin right down the scaphoid as well. We can look in here and see both guide pins just off the SL ligament. into the proximal pole of the scaphoid. All right, so what I'm looking for on the lateral for our fluoroscopy here is that the pins are right down the uh, middle. Uh, here's the outline of the scaphoid. We'll have good fixation. The pin length is right at that distal pole. So when we measure the length of these guide pins, we know exactly what we're going to need. So looking here, I 
on the AP. I can see the guide pins coming right down the axis. I want to be able to look right down the scapo lunate interval to make sure they're all within the scapoid. They're not too ulnar where they're going to cause a problem with the scapoid articulating with the capitate. They're all within the scapoid on the AP view. And here approximately it looks like the, the pins are crossing and the screws may uh, collide, but distally the pins have plenty of space between them to accommodate the two screws. And if we go back to the lateral view, we see that proximally the pins have plenty of space between them to accommodate the tails of the screws and distally is where they appear to be converging. So we know that the pins are in different planes on the two different views and will not cause a problem for the both screws to be within the scaphoid. Clinically, we can look at our guide pins again. We see the SL ligament right here. You'll see that sponginess to the SL ligament, but the guide pins are directly into the scaphoid just off the ligament, both within the bone there. Now we'll use the depth gauge. Our dorsal is measuring 28, which is the full length. So for placing the scaphoid screws, you want to take anywhere typically two to four millimeters off of the depth that you measure to accommodate the fact that you're going to get some compression across the screw. For a non-displaced fracture, you can take the lower end of that scale, you know, maybe the two, but if there's more comminution, you need to be able to accommodate that so you want to take a little bit more off of the uh, measurement. And that's why we have a range of two to four taken off of the depth that's measured compared to the screw length that you actually want to place. So here we're measuring a 28. We'll probably put a 24 in there. And bullerly, again, we're measuring a 28 because they're right beside each other. So we'll put a second 24 in the bowler aspect. Once satisfied with the depth measurement, then we want to advance the guide pins across that distal cortex, either into the trapezium or into the soft tissue a little bit, just to help keep the guide pins in place while we're doing the drilling. Our first device that we'll use over the guide pin will be the profile drill, and we'll use a soft tissue protector over that. And the soft tissue protector stops the profile drill from going too deep due to the change in the caliber of the profile drill so that you don't have to worry about advancing this profile drill too far. Once we've finished using the profile drill, now we can switch to the long drill. And again, the long drill has different uh, marks on it so that you know the exact depth to which you are drilling. You just want to make sure that you can drill across the fracture site. So since we're placing a 24 millimeter screw, we want to drill to accommodate that across the fracture, but not necessarily too far. The markings are in increments of five millimeters. All right, now that we've done the drilling, we can insert the screws over the guide pin as well. And I can look clinically to ensure that the screw is completely buried underneath the cartilage. Know that I have advanced it far enough where it won't be an issue on fluoroscopy. And then when inserting the second screw, you want to follow the same procedures you did with the first one. Directly over the guide pin, making sure that the tail of the screw is completely buried underneath the cartilage. Now looking at the AP, the screws are within that proximal pole and right down the center of the scaphoid. Nothing is interfering with the capitate, nothing's in the SL interval. And now looking at the lateral view, you can see the scaphoid screws are buried underneath the proximal pole of the scaphoid and not prominent distally either. Once satisfied with the screw positions, you can take out the guide pins and get your final fluoroscopic images.